Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From abandoned ancient construction projects to a palace from King Arthur legend, here are nine exciting archaeological discoveries. Number 11. Lake Michigan Shipwreck On Thanksgiving 2019, strong winds and large waves uncovered a mysterious shipwreck in Lake Michigan, off the Muskegon coast. Resident Kim McDaniel discovered the wreck after holiday dinner while checking out the damage from the storm surge, which saw the highest water level since 1985 in certain areas. She called the Coast Guard and local historians, who sent out for divers. Gary Passan and John Hansen of the nonprofit organization West Michigan Underwater Preserve, WMUP, which partners with the state of Michigan to preserve shipwrecks, set to work. With the help of the state marine archaeologists, they gathered measurements and other information in an attempt to identify the ship. So far, the investigators have determined that the ship is an 86-foot-long, 19th-century flat-bottomed scow. Hansen explained in an email to Fox News that they believe it was a barge that sank in 1936, as it was found a quarter mile away from a steam crane that went down after separating from the barge that was towing it. Shortly after, the barge also sank. It's the latest in a series of recent shipwreck discoveries throughout the Great Lakes, which contain an estimated 6,000 sunken ships. Number 10. Unfinished Obelisk In the ancient granite quarries of Aswan, Egypt, sits an unfinished obelisk that would have been the largest ever created, had its creators removed it from its rocky bed and set it upright. The stone structure would have towered at an astonishing 137 feet tall and weighed 1,168 tons, making it much bigger than the largest surviving obelisk located in Rome, which is 105 feet tall and weighs 455 tons. Construction on the unfinished obelisk was abandoned when cracks kept appearing in the granite, even after the builders scaled back its size several times. By then, they had been working on it for months, or possibly even years. Today, the obelisk remains where the workers left it, attached to the rock it was being built from. While archaeologists don't know what pharaoh commissioned the obelisk or where it was intended to be erected, the incomplete project offers them a rare glimpse into ancient Egypt's stone working techniques and its unfortunate engineering failures. It is most likely that obelisks made after this improved as they learned from this giant one that got left behind. And now for number 9, but I have to stop to give a quick thank you to Bobby Manzano. He says, I'm a science enthusiast and I'm glad I discovered this amazing page and I've been watching your videos since 2018. Keep educating us, Origins Explained team. I really love y'all. Appreciate you, Bobby. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the Origins Explained family. Number 9. Ancient Celtic Shield Archaeologists in the UK recently revealed their discovery of a more than 2,000-year-old Celtic warrior's gravesite in Pocklington, East Yorkshire. Sometime between 320 BC and 174 BC, the warrior was laid to rest in his chariot, with two upright horses leaping from it, as if transporting him into the afterlife. The grave also contains weapons, including a shield, which Dr. Melanie Giles of the University of Manchester hails as the most important British Celtic art item of the millennium. Over the past century or so, archaeologists have discovered the remains of 20 humans buried inside chariots throughout the UK, but this is the first time they've uncovered horse remains in a chariot grave in the UK. The gravesite at Pocklington is exceptionally preserved, according to Paula Ware, director of Map Archaeological Practice, which excavated the site. In her words, the burial has no British parallel, providing a greater insight into the Iron Age epoch. A chariot wheel is the only item missing from the grave. The warrior's shield has a unique scalloped design, which Ware referred to as not comparable to any other Iron Age find throughout Europe. It also bears evidence of repairs, meaning it was likely heavily used, she explained. Number 8. 2000 Year Old Mummy Earlier this year, archaeologist Dr. Martin Bomas, who has been digging in Egypt for nearly 30 years, found a mummy purely by chance. During the filming of a documentary called Opening Egypt's Great Tomb in the city of Aswan, a strong gust of wind exposed the 2,000-year-old mummy in the sand. Oddly, the mummy was headless, missing its lower half and lying on its stomach. Bomas theorized that it was probably once buried in a stone tomb, but removed by dogs. 
It was also blackened in some parts, suggesting that it was set on fire at one point. Despite being incomplete and damaged, the mummy's linen and bindings were surprisingly high quality. Bamas believes the mummy was a very wealthy Roman and cited the find as proof that Egypt's deserts contain many yet undiscovered artifacts. Number 7. Roman Era Chicken Egg While excavating a waterlogged pit in Aylesbury, Buckinghamshire, England between 2007 and 2016, archaeologists discovered four 1,700-year-old Roman Era chicken eggs. During the dig, three of the eggs cracked, reportedly releasing an overpowering, potent stench. I can only imagine. Luckily, they managed to preserve the fourth egg, making it the only complete Roman chicken egg ever discovered in Britain. In case you're wondering, the eggs did not break due to any carelessness on the expert's part. In a pit that has been waterlogged for thousands of years, you get things that would never survive in a dry environment. Dig project manager Stuart Foreman explained in a December 2019 interview with The Independent. But it's incredible we even got one out. They were so fragile. The pit was used for malting grain between the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD. After that, it became a wishing well of sorts. Passersby threw offerings into it for the gods of the underworld, according to Edward Biddulph, who analyzed the find extensively. Besides the eggs, archaeologists found shoes, wooden tools, a rare basket, and dozens of coins. Number 6. Civil War Hair Dye in 2015, archaeologists excavating the Merchants' Area of Camp Nelson in Kentucky discovered the remains of the first-ever photography studio ever found at a Civil War site. At the 150-year-old studio site, the team found a glass cover plate, which was used in photography at the time, bottles containing photo development chemicals, small picture frames, and lots of hair dye. They also discovered two stencil plates bearing the name of a young photographer, C.J. Young. The advent of photography vastly changed the way war was documented and remembered. As photos became more affordable, their demand increased, and their popularity means archaeologists are continuously discovering previously unseen photographic evidence of the Civil War and learning more about the day-to-day -day lives of soldiers. Photography-related artifacts are equally important in teaching us about life on the battlefield and in military camps. The discovery of hair dye bottles at the photography studio dig suggests that soldiers commonly darkened their hair before having their portrait taken to ensure that it would not appear white or gray, something that sometimes happened with the black and white photo process, especially for people with light hair. Archaeologist Stephen McBride, who is the Director of Interpretation at Camp Nelson, cited the photography studio as one of the most exciting discoveries of his career. Number 5. D-Day Wall Identities While archaeology teaches us a lot about the past in an academic sense, it also sometimes yields personally meaningful discoveries and reminds us of the more emotional aspects of history. 75 years ago, over 70 U.S. soldiers etched their names into a 62-foot wall in Southampton, England, while waiting to head to Normandy. When historians warned that the etchings were eroding, the Maritime Archaeology Trust began a project to digitally record the wall. Although research carried out during the 1970s identified some of the soldiers, specialized photography more recently led to the identification of over 30 more names. Many of the soldiers who were members of the 99th and 106th Infantry Divisions were in the December 1944 Battle of the Bulge. Among them were two men who later became prisoners of war and several survivors, including New Yorker William Mueller, who became an aeronautical engineer after the war, and Ralph Odom, who worked in construction. The Trust contacted the soldiers' family members, with one daughter stating, My gratitude and appreciation are emotions words can't reach, BBC reported. In the words of Southampton Mayor Peter Bailey, the wall is a fantastic reminder of the human aspect to D-Day, where people actually inscribed their names on a wall as they went to war. Number 4. Kutna Hora Mass Grave Archaeologists recently announced the discovery of a record-breaking mass grave containing the remains of over 1,200 people near the macabre 14th century cemetery church of All Saints in the Czech Republic. Nicknamed the Bone Church and part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it's located near Kutna Hora in the suburb of Sedlec, roughly 53 miles east of Prague. 
The Bone Church is already well known for containing the bones of somewhere between 40,000 and 70,000 people, including mid-14th century plague victims and those who died in the Hussite Wars. Inside, visitors catch an overwhelming, eerie glimpse at the bones, which line the walls and ceiling and are arranged decoratively, even in the chandelier. As part of an ongoing renovation of the medieval ossuary and Roman Catholic Church, archaeologists digging nearby uncovered 34 mass graves containing the remains of Black Death and Famine victims, roughly 600 of each. It's the largest burial ground ever discovered in Europe. While archaeologists are still examining the skeletons, they've learned so far that men outnumbered women, indicating that they were a mining population. Number 3. Mystery Chainmail in November of this year, archaeologists discovered a previously unknown type of well-preserved chainmail armor at the site of Deultum, an ancient Roman colony in southeastern Bulgaria near the Black Sea coast. The chainmail dates back between the 4th and 6th centuries, possibly to the late antiquity period, during the later years of the Roman Empire prior to its split into the Western Roman Empire and the Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire. It may also trace back to the early years of the Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire. It's the first chainmail armor of its type to be discovered in Bulgaria and comes from one of three Roman colonies in Bulgaria that were afforded a status equal to that of Rome itself. It was found near the northern wall of the Deultum fortress in nearly 6,000 wrought iron metal pieces from two or three unique sets of armor. Researchers believe that the suits were leaned up against a wall that collapsed and crushed them. The chainmail also shows traces of wood residue, suggesting that it was once stored in a metal chest. Next steps for archaeologists are to conclusively determine the chainmail's age, distinguish whether the pieces make up two or three sets of armor, and restore them. They expect the task of removing corrosion and piecing the suits back together to take between three and four years. Number 2. Royal Palace of the Dark Ages Closely linked to the legend of King Arthur, this archaeological site in Tintagel, Cornwall has uncovered the remains of a royal palace from the Dark Ages. The palace is thought to have been home to 6th century rulers of Dumnonia, an ancient southwest British kingdom. If you are familiar with the legend of King Arthur, Tintagel plays a huge role as it is said to be the place where King Arthur was conceived. In one version, his mother Igraine was married to the Duke of Cornwall, but Uther Pendragon falls in love with her. I believe in Le Mort d'Arthur and the Mists of Avalon, the Duke of Cornwall has her imprisoned in Tintagel Castle, but Merlin helps Uther transform into the Duke so he can visit her. The Duke dies in battle and Igraine and Uther are then wed. In Tennyson's account of Arthur's birth, Uther and Igraine conceive Arthur in lawful marriage after the death of the Duke. Regardless, this castle must have seen many things during its time. The palace's estimated age of between the 5th and 6th centuries AD fits neatly with the legend of King Arthur. The lasting fascination with the medieval legend should bring this site plenty of interest from scholars, historians, and the general public alike. This is the first considerable building to be found from the Dark Ages in Britain, making it an exciting find regardless of its link to King Arthur. Meter-thick walls and slate flagstone floors have already been excavated. Pottery and glass reveal that the building's inhabitants enjoyed wine from Turkey and olive oil from the Greek Aegean, now Tunisia. Fine bowls and plates have been found and thought to be imported from Turkey and North Africa, as well as cups from French-made glass. This points to an elite people who may have lived in the palace. Number 1. Gobekli Tepe Klaus Schmidt, a German archaeologist, was looking for a new site to explore in 1994 when he came across research from 1963 by some Chicago researchers who had found some unusual stone slabs in Turkey. The site, known as Gobekli Tepe, was in southeastern Turkey near the city of Urfa. Originally, the slabs that had already been recovered were thought to be gravestones, but Schmidt suspected that they were more important than that, so he set to work. The following year, he made one of the most important archaeological discoveries of all time. He found that the slabs were in fact the tops of massive T-shaped structures that were more than 11,000 years old. This meant they were built by people who hadn't even developed the use of metal tools or pottery and who had still been able to construct such large megaliths more than 6,000 years before those at Stonehenge. 
The initial finds were shallow enough in the ground that they had been scratched by plows, but as they dug deeper, they found more and realized that they were all arranged in circular designs and set within ditches that had been dug into the ground. Unusually for finds like this, they didn't recover any evidence of a settlement like houses, trash pits, cooking sites, or fertility figurines that were common in settlements from this period. They did, however, find evidence of primitive tool use and tens of thousands of animal bones, signs that hunter-gatherers had been present here eating gazelles, boar, sheep, deer, and birds, you name it. The interesting thing about Gobekli Tepe is that it has led to historians re-evaluating how ancient societies worked. It was assumed that it was only after complex societies and communities had developed that they were able to devote enough resources to building monolithic structures. Sites like these, however, seem to imply the opposite is true. For some reason, these people were compelled to build these large creations, and they needed to develop a sense of society to enable them to do so. Thanks for watching! Which archaeological discovery was your favorite? What other interesting archaeological discoveries have you heard about recently? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!